It's every Red Raiders favorite podcast. This is the Tech Talk Podcast from Double T 97.3. Hi, how are you? Good afternoon. It's Tech Talk on Double T 97.3 and Double T 97.3.com with Dr. Mike Gustafson and Clint Scott. I'm Aaron Dickens. We're joining you today until 5.30. We'd love to hear your thoughts and your comments on the EH Flooring Center chat line at double dot 973com You can also access that through the double T 973 mobile app presented by Happy State Bank. All guests appear via the Benchmark Hotline. And uh, we'll have the first high school fan zone of the academic year coming up tonight at 7 o'clock on 100.7 The Score. Uh, Friendship will begin its season on Thursday. Uh, Cooper will be in action on Friday. We'll also have uh, uh, the Coronado version of that broadcast, Friendship in Coronado, on Thursday as well. So high school football back, high school fan zone back, college football is back uh, this weekend with some week zero games. We did it, fam. We made it. Dun, 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 dun. We have we have crossed <laughs> the 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 relatively barren sports desert known as the summer, <laughs> and we have made it through relatively unscathed. Yes, indeed. And Good really, stuff. it should have been it shouldn't have been as bad as it was. Not that it was bad. I mean, heck, we had realignment. There was still baseball stuff oh, going yeah. on. Um, but we should have had a World Cup this summer. Right, but it's it's getting pushed uh, into the fall because of how you know insanely hot it is in Cutter, and uh, you know, yeah, and that's uh, that's a uh, Black Friday, one of the one of the feature games for the U.S. Mm-hmm. Black Friday, who who are we playing? Can it might be England. England, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a it's a brand name. No offense to the other countries that aren't quite as brand name. Who are in our, who's in our group? USA World Cup. I was hoping group. we'd play Finland. Oh, we get the prime minister would be there. <laughs> Did you see that she had to take a drug test? No. Yeah, I don't know that she had to, she, but she took one voluntarily and she passed. For those that aren't aware, and, and we'll get to the actual sports news of which there's a lot. Yep. But the the prime minister of Finland is a, a relatively young lady about your age yeah she's yeah. not i mean she's Mid, not 30s, like the yeah. the the boomer you know the the basically right. rules every other country old white guy yeah um and uh no she's you know if, if we're doing uh world leader power ranking she's up there <laughs> like i said when she walks into the un she people wins. shut up and listen yeah she wins yeah no doubt uh, anyway, she not got- Margaret Thatcher. I think it was the hashtag <laughs> no. you came up with. Not Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> Definitely not. No, and and not uh, what Angela Merkel. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I guess uh, some photos came out of her partying with some friends, and uh, you know it's a thing now. I guess in Finland to some degree. I don't know. Yeah, and she was, and she was clothed and all that. Oh yeah, no, it yeah, wasn't she, like it was just like probably she was, had some drinks and was dancing or whatever. She wasn't was wearing like, like a uh, like yeah. a bunny rabbit no. like hoodie thing with a lollipop in her mouth and no. you know <laughs> no. a bunch of glow sticks, you know, doing a bunch of e or anything. She was just dancing with some friends. But as prime ministers go, <laughs> right? I mean, if it's just hey, it's some some friends, you'd you'd look at that bore that video and go, well, that's boring. Why am I looking at that? Like, yeah, that's the prime minister finning. Ooh, okay. Uh, this on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. 80 looks less sassy without the mustache. <laughs> All right. Uh, somebody else says this. I couldn't take it off mute before seeing AD do jazz hands. What's up now? We're just talking about, you know, <laughs> European prime ministers. and right. so, Wait, and there leaders. was a soccer segue. Yeah. What was the soccer? You were oh, looking at our, our group. group. Yeah, yeah. We're, we, we have Wales, uh, England, and Iran. Okay. Or Iran, whatever. Yeah, there we go. So, so that yeah. So the the segue there, as you and I played attention span theater, was was the the idea that the summer could have had World Cup in it, but it's been pushed to the fall. And USA versus England is mm-hmm. a Black feature. Friday. Yeah, it's a feature event on Black Friday. Yeah, this in the Yates Flooring Center chat line is it Cutter or Qatar 
<laughs> I've never known the right way to pronounce. I I don't know either. I kind of go back and forth. Yeah, I do too. We do have a lot of uh, news to discuss. Uh, we have Patrick Mahomes uh, Ring of Honor news that happened over the weekend. Yep. We have QB1 news at Texas Tech. Uh, Tyler Shuck will start for the Texas Tech Red Raiders at quarterback uh, to open up the season. And then we have uh, some more expansion news. And this, is, this isn't this is the type of, like, quote, news where you have to kind of, like, squint your eyes and tilt your head to one direction to kind of, you know, classify it as news. This is a report from Britt McMurphy that said uh, that that representatives of Oregon, the University of Oregon, um, you know, have met with Big Ten officials in Chicago and are, you know, basically kind of checking the temperature on a potential pa- or a Big Ten invite. I wonder who the representatives are. I think Phil Knight's there. Or I, Phil I, I bet the they're meeting. wearing a lot of Nike. <laughs> yeah, there's because yeah. McMurphy was very clear in his report, too, that it wasn't like outgoing president. Right. Who I guess is now going to Northwestern. Yeah, that's right. right. Yes, um, it's not the AD. Uh, Kevin Warren was not at the meeting. These are described as preliminary discussions in Chicago with the Big Ten to determine if the Ducks are compatible in the Big Ten. So there you go, and. This is, I mean, whether Oregon gets the thumbs up or not, right? To to me, this is just yet another big flashing sign to the four corner programs, right? Yep. This isn't going to last for very long, dude. They're looking, yeah, they're looking, and they're trying to get get away. Yep. It's it's a tough deal for the Oregon State Washington State combo, but. If Oregon goes and Washington goes, then there's the there's the jingle. What do we call them? Tiles? Is it jing- a jinga a tile? Is it a jinga block? Block? I would think of it as block. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Would sure feel that way? And that's exactly what you said. The, the, then those schools are like, are you? Would you at that point without Oregon and Washington? Wouldn't you rather be in a uh, conference that's got? you know, what the Big 12 has going for it rather than a reconstituted Pac-12 with UNLV and... Yeah, and... I'm sorry, SMU, so you'd have the well, DFW and, and market. beyond that, like, if, if ESPN comes back with a number that is comparable to what the Big 12 is offering, and you know at some point your your headliner is going to leave, yeah. maybe your two headliners, maybe, you know, four of your headliners, why not just, you know, pull the ripcord? And they're also going to be in a situation where they would most likely be aligned regionally. Well, they would certainly be aligned regionally, but they would be, uh, you know, still playing each other. It's not like now if, we, if us four need to stick together, we are going to get to stick together. Mm-hmm. You'd be in, you'd be your own little corner at in, at in BYU. But yeah, you'd be your own little corner of this nationwide four time zone conference. The juice is next on Lubbock's Sports Station. Double T 97.3. The podcast that finishes your work day in a very Red Raider way. This is the Tech Talk podcast from Double T 97.3. Hey, it's the juice on Double T 97.3, Double T 97.3.com and the Double T 97.3 mobile app presented by Happy State bank with mike gustafson and clint scott i'm aaron dickens time for some headlines the texas rangers back in action again this evening they will take on the minnesota twins tonight first pitch scheduled for 6 10 p.m our pregame coverage will begin for you at 5 30 on this fine radio station bit of an abbreviated tech talk today as a result rangers uh, have won two games in a row they won yesterday seven to nothing uh, they now have won three of their last four ball games and six of their last nine. Rangers 55 and 66 overall, uh, 22 games back of the first place Houston Astros. Astros 
salvaged a win yesterday in Atlanta. They dropped that series two games to one. Uh, they will open up a series against the Twins tomorrow. They're off today. And we'll have that game for you on 100.7 The Score. We'll actually join that game in progress tomorrow evening at 8 o'clock after the high school fan zone. Uh, we all know that Tyler Shuck was announced yesterday as Texas Tech's starting quarterback. Uh, this comes on the heels of Quinn Ewers being named the starting quarterback uh, late last week. Um, and this is really just kind of starting quarterback season, right? Mm-hmm. SC's in. And uh, a familiar name being named the starter at Liberty, Charlie Brewer, former Baylor quarterback, uh, will be Liberty's starting quarterback this season. That was announced by Hugh Freeze today. Uh, He is in his sixth year of eligibility. Started 39 games for Baylor, uh, transferred to Utah. And that didn't go so well. Started the first three games, lost the job and then uh, quit the program and entered his name into the portal. And that was a Pac-12 championship team. That's right. Yeah. So is that six teams or five for the Brewer brothers? Ooh, uh, that is Cause it five. Was, was it, it was just te- Texas Tech to Virginia Tech. Right. Okay, that's right. I was I was wanting to say that there was a third after. I don't know why I wanted to stick him some, at some other school there. You too can join the program. We'd love to hear your thoughts and comments today on the Yates Flooring Center chat line at double T 973.com or through the double T 973 mobile app presented by Happy State Bank. Uh, Some thoughts and questions here on the chat line. AD, are you a fan of the West Wing? Uh, I have watched the West Wing all the way through. I enjoyed it. Um, I don't know that it really holds up as much now uh, as it did when it first came out. Um, but it's all right, you know. Uh, you know, it's it's been one that I've wanted to go back and watch. I didn't watch it originally. Heard great things about it, and and but I don't know why. But now I'm like, I don't know if it's just the weariness with. I don't know. I don't know. But for yeah, some reason, no, why would you want to like for as much of a dumpster fire as everything yeah. seems right now? Yeah. No matter what you know, t- you know, color you root for, uh, red or blue. Why would you want to like? on your on your free time like Subject, dive back into yeah. that and that's just it i've got others that i'm like you know hey i need to you know put that on the list put that on the list yeah west wing and now i'm like oh man west wing's kind of down yeah like w- what does it say about the environment uh in the discourse when you'd much rather go watch for like the third time in a row uh you know a series about a uh, a meth dealer than uh <laughs> yeah. than you know one about the president uh, this in the chat line from Bobby Hot Dogs. AD, I was at a local brewery over the weekend and noticed that they make Dickens cider. Have you ever had the pleasure of one of those yet? I have not. No, I have not. Uh, this they should uh, reach out. I mean, perfect you know sponsorship opportunity. Uh, this in the chat line from Sterling. Why did Joe McGuire say that every quarterback will play besides the first game of the season? Wouldn't we hope for just one starter? Typically, if a team has more than one quarterback, that means they aren't very good. I would love to see, and I don't know who it is that does the research, you know, the way Sabre people and baseball prospectus people do research on baseball, you know, like deep dive inside Mm -hmm. baseball stuff. I'm sure somebody has done the, we've got three, we've, you know, basically, because a lot of times the research will be based on some adage like that. If you've got two quarterbacks, you've got no quarterback. Oh, okay. I mean, I've always accepted that as the truth. You know, we say it, we trumpet that sort of stuff. But is it true? And I don't know. Uh, A lot of times if it's three, two or three mediocre quarterbacks, then the, 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 the verbiage probably holds. Well, there's a pretty good chance we're going to have two quarterbacks no matter what. He's saying all three are playing the first couple of games for sure. But I think Smith is going to play at goal line and those kind of short yardage deals all the time. So we're going to have two quarterbacks. And, and I'm curious how the third quarterback gets on the field, whether it's a bunch of trickery or if it's just, uh, you know, I, I don't know. But he's talked about at length. I mean, from the beginning of spring, he's talked about three packages and so, I, I, but I don't, I don't know if I really buy the idea that whoever our quarterback needs to be out there all the time, and that's it's that's certainly been true. We can all come up with the 
instances in which that's true. But I also like the idea of if we get into a situation on down the road that we don't have a third stringer that's only played in practice and four snaps against Murray State or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'm not that – to me, I view that as more coach speak than yeah, anything sure. else. Now, you're, I, I think you're exactly right. I think that they will play Donovan Smith situationally. Mm-hmm. But I don't view that really as – In every game. Yeah, yeah but I don't yeah. really view that as um, him being the same in terms of like, we're going to rotate quarterbacks. To me, that's completely different. Because, right. uh, I mean, Oklahoma did that with Blake Bell and Landry Jones to great success. Sure. For a couple of years, yep. um, and, and no one ever thought that Blake Bell was kind of infringing on Landry Jones's, you know, role as the quarterback. Um, now, I mean, do I think that Baron Morton, when push comes to shove, is going to get like meaningful, like a meaningful series against Houston or NC State or Texas? Absolutely not. I just don't. I, I could be wrong, right? And and wouldn't be the first time or like the hundredth time for me to be wrong. But you know, that would that would shock me. Like I don't under. I mean, that would totally blow me away because I don't know that Baron Morton really gives you something that that in a significant way that Tyler Shuck or Donovan Smith don't. You know, like I think that they're all unique in their own special different ways. But I I don't know that he gives you something. Um, that is so much greater than Tyler Shuck or Donovan Smith that you would put him in there with that relative inexperience and and like you know view that as a, as a risk reward for, you know versus uh, worth taking. You know, I, I've wondered if there's a, a a sort of a trick package or something where he lines up out there at a you know at an inside deal or in a bubble type screen. Or help them all out there. Yeah. And, and that they're both out there in a way that it's almost like the, the flag football team that was hard to beat in college that you're like, they're going to throw it out to that guy and then he can do any number of things, right? He can take off running or he can, as long as they throw it backwards, you got a lot of stuff in play, at, at play here. And so is it is it trickery, whatever? And, and it's just, it's one of those things that could make, uh, could make us tough to prepare, us being Texas Tech, you know, tough to prepare for especially early on, but I, I sure do like the, the, the thought of those dudes getting snaps and, um, you know, being just being a little bit better for it later on down the line. And, you know, well, you want to keep them happy. Yeah, sure. And, and this time next year, it's a two, I assume a two headed competition. We would hope and won't get too far out in the planning these days in this portal era. But, uh, you know, the, there's two, two and two guys separated by one year of eligibility. This in the Yates Flooring Center chat line for Matthew. AD, tell everyone to go vote for Tech in the Fox Sports Twitter poll. We were against OSU and we're in a dead heat. All right, Let's so go. go go vote on the Twitter poll, people. There you go. Come on, what are we doing? Let's go. Are we doing? Uh, this on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Uh, someone says that they started watching Terminal List based on a suggestion that they saw in the chat line. Not bad. Okay, how about that? Okay. Um, has anybody seen the Game of Thrones deal from last night? No. I haven't no. seen it. I was going to watch it this afternoon. Yeah. But uh, apparently there's like an issue with HBO Max and Amazon Prime. So it kept on crashing. Speaking of Amazon Prime, you're uh, they got in on the... Uh, they missed on the bid the other day for UEFA rights. And we know yeah. that they were in at one point on the Pac-12 rights. And so they are showing an interest. They're clearly hungry. Yes. They haven't won anything yet. And, you know, our rights are going to be up here in another year or so. So the come on over you, here to the Big 12. Do you think that the Big 12 has the guts to do that? To put a significant part of its media, you know, first or second tier rights on a streaming only platform? uh significant the, the how much is the is the key key question there what is this song more tech talk next Milli vanilli oh okay <laughs> the podcast put together with red raider fans in mind this is the Tech Talk Podcast from Double T 97.3. Hi, how are you? Good afternoon. It's Tech Talk on Double T 97.3, Double T 
97.3.com and the Double T 97.3 mobile app presented by Happy State Bank with Mike Gustafson and Clint Scott. I'm Aaron Dickens. We're joining you today until 5.30. Love to get your thoughts and comments on the Yates Flooring Center chat line at Double T 97.3.com or through the Double T 97.3 mobile app presented by Happy State Bank. All guests appear via the Benchmark Hotline, Rangers and Twins, your Coverage begins at 5.30 here on Double T 97.3. Uh, this on the chat line from Sleepy Llama. <laughs> S-H-L-E-E-P-Y, Sleepy. Uh, okay, let's be honest. Biggest news today is Mahomes getting a Fortnite skin. Uh, and also, I would have been happy with any of the quarterbacks to start for Tech. I believe they all have what it takes to win yep. in Kitley's offense. Yep. I'll have to see if uh, Bonus Kid has got the Mahomes skin. I hadn't, I hadn't heard about that. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't play first-person shooters anymore because my uh, my as I've gotten older, I find my my twitchiness has diminished greatly. So whereas you know, fifteen years ago, I could have pwned all the noobs, you know, with a, so, with an AWP or so. something like that. Um, Seemed like a mini Uzi guy. Mini no, Uzi guy. no, I was AWP all the way in Counter Strike, dude. One shot, one kill. Um, <laughs> oh my god! But uh, but now it, I just get dunked on by fourteen year olds, and it's not very fun. That's the problem. Yeah. So so you, fifteen years ago, you described yourself as twitchy, like you've got good eye discipline. Sure. Good hips, good feet. He's twitchy. He's kind well, of a twitchy athlete. Good More eyes, good, good thumbs, thumbs, good, good wrists. Thumbs. Yeah. yeah, just yeah. all those things. Good 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 eye discipline, whatever it is. And now he's just confessing, like yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, now I just play Pong, essentially. <laughs> Pong, Pong Dude, with the I saw, big paddles and the I slow I saw like mode. a real-life version of Pong yeah. on Instagram the other day, and I'm sure it's like stupid expensive, but it's an action. And this is it's kind of funny now that we've gone full circle, sure. right? Whereas before it was this groundbreaking video game, and now it's now it's tangible and you can touch it. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like I guess it uses magnets and stuff to where you're physically playing Pong, and it plays oh, just wow. like really? the video game. Okay. I don't... I don't recall if it has the sounds or not, which is a key component of the experience. But uh, uh, this on the Yates Flooring Center. Cha- what do you think Pat's like more geeked out about? The Fortnite skin or the Ring of Honor deal? <laughs> I hope the Ring of Honor, but I don't know. It is kind of funny because like, as as dumb as it sounds, like compared to the people that they have added into that game, that's a pretty esteemed circle to show like, hey, yeah, you're kind of the top athlete in sports right now yeah no yeah. i mean i think you're exactly right um because as as big of a deal as it as it is like inside the tech circle that mahomes is in the ring of honor right more people will hear about him and know about him because of the Fortnite skin sure because there are, i mean there are millions of kids out there that aren't watching the nfl uh and it's, yeah and it's a different group oh, even yeah. even as you're saying whether it's bigger or whatever it's a different group of people that's there's the key this on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Um, somebody says, I can't stand Quinn Ewer's hair. Get a haircut, dude. It doesn't bother me. Uh, this on the chat line. Uh, Even though Tyler Shuck is listed as a senior, doesn't he technically have the same three years of eligibility as last year since he... Got hurt in only the fourth game. Yeah, like a like, could you get a hardship medical? That's a good question. I didn't think about that. Uh, I don't. I mean, because normally it's three, right? That's your red shirt deal. Um, let's see, high school, 2018, 2019, 2020 at Oregon. Yep. He redshirted 2018. So twenty doesn't really count. So nineteen. I think. I think what you might have instead of a medical hardship, you might have a COVID year, yeah. right? Because everybody who played, who was in college at that time, gets a freebie. And so if if he chooses, if I'm reading this right, if I'm reading these uh, years right, then he would have um, a COVID year should he want it. Remember this time last year, there was there was there was some Las Vegas odds makers. You and I've talked about this that had him as a you know whatever one of the had decent had like the sixth highest chance of being a first round draft pick last year and so my assumption would be 
I assume he's probably done with his degree by now. Well, um, at least one, yeah, probably least like one. four. Yeah, and and uh, especially as a quarterback who probably hung around every summer and took a full boat. Uh, but yeah, there, you know, him he, he may be at that point where he he would want to take his shot at professional football and and move on with life. But who knows? Yeah, that's interesting. It, it, I think by that math, there is another year there if he wants it. He got uh, degrees in criminal justice and political science at Oregon. <laughs> he's pursuing a master's right now at uh, at Texas Tech. Yeah, and he's a year into that, so probably a fall, a spring, and perhaps even a summer, and now a fall again, so he's got to be getting close on that. You know, it's kind of one of those weird deals where I think there's, there's under really either scenario for this season – it it's probably he's probably gone and and here and listen we're cart way before the horse yeah, here sure. but you know it's sports talk radio what do you want um if 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 tech exceeds expectations and you know even if that's only winning seven games uh and shuck is a big part of that right hey strike while the iron's hot right. you know and as you said i mean he's he graduated high school in 2018 um it, it, he would want to leave and pursue, I would guess, professional opportunities. If if you kind of like just aren't very good, right? If you're four and eight, if you're kind of a, a, a not very impressive five and seven, wouldn't you want to turn the page? Yeah, I was trying. I was thinking about that the other direction. Like, what scenario would it be that you go? I've got to come back and finish that. Like, if they went ten and two this year and were on the, like the momentum, just you know, there was helium and under the program and and there's a tough loss that knocks them out of the conference championship or they lose the conference championship you got a bunch of dudes back you got a bunch of dudes coming in like no nah, i won't come back and do that again well, you know is there a scenario you come back yeah probably but and 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 heck maybe this is where nil can kind of sweeten the pot yeah you know sure. and then that's this situation that you didn't really have with with michael crabtree or right. jason morrow or anybody like that um you know who left early uh this on the yates flooring center chat line um baron morton is more about use or lose in my opinion he is a high level recruit he's not going to sit forever when everyone can offer a high value package to recruit him i don't blame him either if there's a good team needing a stud talent he'll be heavily recruited to play um if he plays red shirt level snaps We'll see. I mean, uh, who knows? Because um, it, it, fundamentally, right, If it, there's nothing. His situation next year at Tech versus a, a hypothetical situation someplace else next year, right, is the same, right? You would be entering a position uh, competing for a job. Mm -hmm. Whether you're kind of, hey, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, it's your job or not, you've got to go earn it. And, you know, would you rather do that someplace else, unfamiliar, uh, new system, new place, or would you rather do that where you know the system, where you know the place, where you're comfortable? A lot goes into that. And, again, the, you, you can't even see the horse from the cart right now. Yeah, no doubt. Um, and, yeah, and I would think, the, you know, this is where just Coach McGuire's influence and you know, the excitement of playing for him and a season under him and a season under Kitley, what's all that like, you know? Like, I can't wait to be a part of this or meh. And I would think it's going to be, I can't wait to be a part of this and see where it goes, you know, hopefully in, what, four months from now. That's what everybody's saying, like, oh, my gosh. And that's just the beginning of it. Uh, but who knows, uh, especially this new offense. So Tyler Shuck is the starting quarterback, second year in a row. He is – begun the season as the starter um hopefully he plays in uh every game It'll be 13 of them yeah i hope he plays in 14 How's at that? least yeah how about least. 14 15 15 16 <laughs> have y'all seen that uh <laughs> there's a clip somewhere of some kid like counting and being very aggressive I think it might be like a sesame street deal nice like that was the count when i was a kid one Ooh. Ha, ha, yeah. ha, 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 three. Thirteen Red Raider wins. Ha, yes, ha, ha. exactly. <laughs> I'll try to find it. As I recall, it was pretty funny. Mm -hmm. 
Love to hear your thoughts and comments on the Yates Flooring Center chat line at double T ninety seven three dot com or through the double T ninety seven three mobile app presented by Happy State Bank. More tech talk next. The podcast that finishes your workday in a very Red Raider way. This is the Tech Talk Podcast from Double T 97.3. Hi, how are you? Good afternoon. It's Tech Talk on Double T 97.3 and Double T 97.3.com with Mike Gustafson and Clint Scott. I'm Aaron Dickens. We're joining you today until 6, no, I'm sorry, 5.30. Uh, we'll have a Rangers baseball game for you that starts at 6 with pregame coverage beginning at 5.30 on Lubbock's Sports Station. High school fans on your 7 o'clock on 100.7 The Score. Uh, this on the chat line. Uh, somebody says, my mom's most gourmet dish was iceberg lettuce, a scoop of cottage cheese or mayo, canned pineapple, and shredded cheese on top. I have no idea. That's... It, very interesting. That's hmm. uh, this from Howell. I like pineapple as long as it comes with a gnome and some white rocks. Is that a what do you say? Wheat strain? Is that what you're? What is that what the is deal it pineapple? is? Pineapple. What's is that? How that goes? <laughs> I don't. I need you to need you to help me. I'm here trying to catch up with you, young guys. <laughs> it was used correctly. You if I hear a correct. random pairing of nouns Just in phrase, yeah. A random uh, pairing of nouns or maybe adjective we noun. Then I we go. have children's books now. We have marker colors. We have weed strains. We have horse names. I mean, really, your choice. What are oh. you eating? Sunflower seeds. Uh, this in the Yates nice. Flooring Center chat line. Uh, guess what pairs well with pear juice? Whiskey. Like, like you know legit pear juice or like the syrup that yeah. comes from a canned pear? There you go. But that would be good. You know what pairs good with whiskey? An ice cube. That's what <laughs> pairs good with whiskey, people. Be trying to trick stuff up. Uh, somebody <laughs> says, uh, Nehigh Peach Soda was awesome. I might have mispronounced that uh, name. but Nehigh, nice. Yeah. Uh, that so... was in the genre that we worked with here on Friday. Okay. Right? right? I mean, wouldn't it? Have to be. We had strawberry and grape mm-hmm. and orange. Uh, this on the chat line, somebody says, uh, Peaches come in a can... They were put there by a man in a factory downtown. Exactly. If if I had my little way, I'd eat peaches every day. The, the, the of the three canned fruits, three, certainly the three we've discussed here. How many other cans? There's probably a lot more. It's a great question. I mean, but, there's for uh, a cocktail. It doesn't count. Yeah, no. Right. You can't no, buy canned no. apples easily. Yeah, those they were like the candied apples deals that were cored. Oh God. So, like, the canned pineapple's way ahead of the peach and the pear for me in the canning family. See, I would go, I would actually go pear, peach, pineapple. Oof. Dang. Uh, this yeah. on the Yates Flooring Center chat line from Sooner and Lubbock. Charlie Brewer is the Van Wilder of <laughs> college football. Yeah, it was, that whole thing was very odd to me. Um, you know, for someone that has started so many games... And has won so many games, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, he was he was successful there at Baylor. Um, the, the fact that he left was very interesting, and then the fact that he left Utah uh, when he wasn't immediately successful was also interesting. Yeah, I agree. It was, it, I mean, just from the outside, not knowing anything about it, it looked very kind of like what a baby. I lost my starting job, therefore I quit. It's not like he finished up the season and said, "I'm going to go ahead and enter the portal." It's like I'm quitting after the third week. Yeah. And again, it's not like, well, they were in chaos and disarray and what a stupid mistake that was. No, no, no. They went on and won the Pac-12 without him. So, Shelly Jones says that she took a Vietnam War literature class in her last semester at Tech. It was worth the tuition. See, I do regret like uh, not um, doing more of that stuff when yeah. I was in school, right? I was just kind of in a race to finish. Right. I wish I would have taken more of those classes that didn't really apply to my degree plan, but interested me. Yeah, those are the ones that you that that you think about now and go, man. If I if I went back now, even at at my age, if I went back, you cherry pick the interesting oh, courses, sure. right? Um, or or can pineapple pick the? Oh yeah, there we go. Interesting course. Yep. Somebody says pineapple and iced tea is good. 
Uh, they're also a big fan of pineapple on pizza. Uh, this person says, my lips pair great with whiskey. <laughs> there you go. Have you asked Gus about the pineapple pizza question? Yeah, it was an early, it was, was an early get to know I think me. That was like day one. It was an early get to know me. Where, thing. where have you been? Not my preference. I don't know. I don't really remember past week. So we had we had pizza on Friday. There was no pineapple involved. I left here, and the next thing in my mouth was pizza. After all the fruity sodas we drank. It's a good. Uh, that, it's a, I mean, speaking of things that pair well, I would say that. Of of the major food groups, you know, I would say pizza is probably better with fruity soda than like Mexican food or Chinese food. You know, I think I disagree. I don't. I, I, I don't want to like taco a little bit. Yeah, that's over what I was thinking. I was, my, my first, my first really would be yeah. Mexican food. Yeah, that's why I like Mountain Dew Baja Blast. But like you're gonna like made you're gonna for... like drink some strawberry Fanta with some enchiladas. I said tacos specifically. Yeah, he did. He did say that. This on the chat line from Bobby Hot Dogs. Pineapple is a trash fruit. Oh. It is the Kansas. <laughs> of the fruit world. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> it's hopefully, hurtful. Hope we'll get to meet all these folks in person here in a couple of weeks at our first remote. Yeah, yeah. We'll a week be and at, a half. We'll be at Twin Peaks a week from Thursday. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll be uh, on campus, I would assume, Sudden Link Game Day Live mm-hmm. on Saturday the 3rd. Yep. Or, yeah. Or perhaps the new branding. Isn't it the new word, the O word? I don't know. Optimum game day live. I I have not received any memos. I don't know. Is it? I don't know if that's a secret. Sure, yeah. Gonna have to practice that because I, <laughs> I, I will. Like we got about twelve years worth of. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm still you know halfway tempted to say Schlotsky's text line, you know, <laughs> and that's been over for ages. I mowed the yard yesterday in a 2009-2010 Sudden Lake shirt. Remember when it was the open the can, open a can? That was kind of their tagline was uh, their op- open a can, and it had a, like a can on it, and that was suddenly I don't remember what it was. I don't. I don't get it. Advertising campaign. A uh, can of peaches. That's what he oh, said. Yeah, okay. that's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, this in the channel, and I would love to go take some sculpture classes at Tech. Oh. Okay. There you go. Right. Somebody says this is from that guy. Uh, hey, does pineapple go on pizza? Does pepperoni go on a pina colada? No and no. Next question. I mean, I wouldn't mind like having some pepperoni to eat with a pina colada, you know? Yeah. Gus is Gus is done with this There's conversation. A wrinkle. No, you I'm good. Like I'm really good with it. But that particular. Huh? There's, there's just a mild disagreement between you and me on that. Uh, C. Kennedy says it's not tamales. Like that day we talked about rats and big. <laughs> <laughs> uh, C. Kennedy says tamales and big red, but. To me, Big Red isn't really like a fruit soda. It's like a cinnamon soda. Really? No, that's not true. That's the gum. Never mind. It's like yeah. cotton candy, more like. Okay. Maybe that's the next genre. You furrowed your brow, Clint. I thought Big Red was just a, a cream soda that was red. Yeah, it's more like that than a fruit. So that may need to be the next soda Could day. be. Our next soda day needs to be Big Red, but it sure would be appropriate if Clint brought That's Big true. Red. The ginger. We the might big have to wait ah. for his turn there. Big Red in there. Bring in some Big Red. Beard, yes. <laughs> the beard. Uh, we'll have more <laughs> tech talk coming up next on Lubbock Sports Station, Double T 97.3. Double T 97.3.com and the always on Double T 97.3 mobile app presented by Happy State Bank. It's every Red Raiders favorite podcast. This is the Tech Talk Podcast from Double T 97.3. Hey, it's the juice on Double T 97.3 and Double T 97.3.com with Mike Gustafson and Clint Scott. I'm Aaron Dickens. Time for some headlines. The Texas Ranger baseball team will be in action tonight. Closing out a four-game series against the Minnesota Twins. First pitch tonight. From Target Field in the Twin Cities, 6, 10 p.m. Central Time, our pregame coverage will start for you at 5.30 on Double T 97.3. The Astros are off today. They will open up a series in Houston against the Twins tomorrow with 
a first pitch of 7 10 p.m astros uh took one of three in atlanta versus the defending world champion atlanta braves former baylor and utah quarterback charlie brewer has been named the starting quarterback for the liberty university flames that was announced today by coach hugh freeze brewer started 39 games for baylor from 2017 through 2020 and quarterbacked the bears for the big 12 conference championship game in 2019 baker mayfield uh, has been named the starting quarterback for week one for the carolina panthers they'll open up the season september 11th against the cleveland browns mayfield's former team And at uh, Texas Tech yesterday, Tyler Shuck named the starting quarterback for the Red Raiders. You too can join the program. We would love to hear from you today. Let us know what you think on the Yates Flooring Center chat line at double T 973.com or through the double T 973 mobile app presented by Happy State Bank. Somebody says this in the chat line. Want to wish good luck to Lubbock's own Drake Molinar competing in the Little League World Series home run derby contest this Friday in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. It'll be on ESPN at 6 o'clock. How about that? Nice. Dingers are always fun, no matter if you're little leaguer, big leaguer, college, nothing. What's anything. the thing? Chicks dig the long ball? Yeah, they do. I mean, that's the rumor. I had no idea. I've never hit a long ball before. I, I, I think the best a, I did in Little League was like a, a double. I didn't, hit enough yeah. to, I didn't hit enough to really test out all the angles there. But I know they don't love like walks and all the things that I brought to the table. Yeah, Sacrifice or strikeouts in my, uh, yeah, in my <laughs> Never game. underestimate the heart of a champion. Yeah. He's a good on-base man. You know, the, the head cheerleader wasn't lining up for that. Uh, Pat Mahomes headed to the Ring of Honor. Uh, will be inducted in October. He will be simultaneously inducted into the Texas Tech Hall of Fame. Um, what are y'all's thoughts here? Yeah, Baylor weekend, which happens to be a, uh, which happens to be a uh, open week for the Chiefs, mm-hmm. which is convenient. Right, that's kind of important. You bet. Well, that'll be a uh, really good situation there. Uh, yeah, I think it's. I mean, you talk about. Well, you you said it earlier. World of Warcraft. What was it? What's the game that's got him? Oh, as Fortnite. A, Fortnite. Yeah. There, whatever. World of Warcraft was the other conversation we had. Mm-hmm. Clearly into the esports, uh, yeah. That, that he's his own character now, or skin, or whatever. But but I mean, just that he's he is one of the most prominent people in all of professional sports, certainly in the United States. I don't know if he's knocking uh, the the international soccer footballers out of the out of the way there, Neymar and all that group. Sure, whoever those guys are. Uh, but he's. Uh, yeah, as prominent as it gets, I don't think there's any question that he was going to go in at some point, so why not cash in on his popularity now? And I don't literally mean cash in, but just, just uh, isn't it a pretty good thing to have recruits walking through there and seeing his name on the wall up there and just getting getting yourself tied in with him as best you can? Yeah, to me, this, this seems like more about kind of, uh, I mean, I think you said this, striking while the iron's hot and and making use of it than it is about you know waiting to honor the the best players in your program's history you know after they've retired and you know some time has passed since they last played um you know because i mean elmer tarbox went in last year and he didn't play he played like what 80 years ago yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. so um to, yeah to me this is about like let's let's leverage this and you know yeah and certainly with his help. blessing it's not like he's being exploited no, in any way no. and and that i think is a big part of it any, anytime you honor someone this who's at this you know relatively young age you need to have some trust in him or her I'm not gonna be out there and embarrassing you and i don't mean embarrassing you by throwing too many interceptions but just you know that if their if their life goes wayward, you're yeah. Because look, stuck look, with him. look yeah. at Vince Young, right? right. Yeah. Look look at how his what his path you know how his path you know went and and up and down etc. Um, you know after he was done playing, 
uh, or I mean, Michael Vick, or I mean, the list goes on and on. I mean, there, there are um, any example, any number of examples of athletes that have had not great kind of moments in their story. Um, but like you said, this is a good um, indication that they trust Pat Mahomes to not not be one of those stories. Sure. And certainly, he's given us no reason to think that that would ever be the case. I mean, straight and narrow throughout. Uh, his time, at least in our you know neck of the woods and in Kansas City, and so yeah, you, um, you, that's not something that I'm worried about. Agree, and I, I think um, his he he probably really benefits from having a major league father in the, in the sense that he's seen that limelight before Pat Mahomes, Patrick being the quarterback, Pat being the pitcher. Uh, Pat Mahomes had a nice big league career, but it wasn't anywhere near as storied sure. as as Patrick's football career is, but still getting to just experience some limelight and, you know, uh, deal with the, some of that stuff probably helped him gain perspective on the, the celebrity and the limelight maybe a little sooner than some others might have. Yeah, you would think so. Yeah, probably served him well. Sure. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the kind of um, experience that I would guess would be invaluable for an athlete. You know, just just growing up in that environment and kind of just being aware of it. I, I you know, just everything I've heard about him, just even behind the scenes, has been good. I'm not saying he never drank a beer or whatever. I'm not I'm not trying to create some false narrative around him, but just you know, guys who are around him in the baseball program at the the one year he was there, I think in 2015, all had good things to say about. Him. You know, you're kind of like once this thing starts getting going, like, hey, how is he with baseball? And of course, my right. son was part of it. At that point, duh. But, you know, nobody was going, well, with us, he was a selfish brat. Like, no, no, no. They were like, no, he was great. He was, he was, a t in many respects, he was sort of a team leader, and he famously pitched like two innings and got, got like two pinch hit at bat. So it wasn't about his, his, his prominence on the field, but just, you know, he, he had sort of a commander in a program where he really wasn't an on, on, on field uh, contributor, but just you hear nothing but good things about him. Uh, this in the chat line uh, from Sooner and Lubbock is this the quickest induction in tech history? Yes, yeah, without question. I mean, Crabtree would have been the quickest when he was inducted a couple of years ago, um, and even then, he had been retired it, for a couple of years and and a decade plus removed from his time at Texas Tech. Yeah, and I think I think uh, the standard is that there's a minimum of ten years. Uh, for the Hall of Fame, the Ring of Honor hasn't been around. Has it been around for ten years? I think now? so. It's right yeah, at ten years. Give or take. The Ring of Honor has just just hasn't existed for that long, and the early precedent was uh, quite appropriately the only people had who had gotten in there. The first five, I guess, that got in there were college football Hall of Famers, mm -hmm. uh, and then that expanded with Crabtree. Technically, got in there before he was inducted. He's being inducted this year, and then. Uh, Tarbox, and I assume Tarbox is the first guy on that Ring of Honor who will never get in. I assume, right? Uh, and and Patrick, uh, as the criteria goes for the College Football Hall of Fame, will never get in because in order to get on the ballot, you have to be a first team All American, and this is the College Football Hall of Fame ballot. Uh, you had to be a first team All American. By one of the seven agencies, you know, all one of the APD, one of the primary yeah, yeah. teams. Yeah, it right. can't be like Joe's blog on right. GeoCities or a newspaper yeah. or something like that. Yeah, it's, there's like seven agencies that they sort of recognize, and uh, you know, college baseball has four or five now, and at one point there was one or two, but that that sort of thing. And so, and Patrick was never that. He was no. never a first team. He was never even first team All Big Twelve. But uh, the talent was recognized. He was obviously a great player here. So. Uh, I assume Mahomes and Tarbox will be the first two up there that might never be in the College Football Hall of Fame. But as far as him being a, in the ring of honor, it's a no-brainer for me. I'm excited about it. More Tech Talk next. podcast put together with Red Raider fans in mind. This is the Tech Talk Podcast from Double T 97.3. Hi, how are you? Good afternoon. It's 
Tech Talk on Double T 97.3 and Double T 97.3.com with Mike Gustafson and Clint Scott. I'm Aaron Dickens. We're joining you today till 530, an hour left. Love to hear your thoughts and comments in the EH Flooring Center chat line at Double T 97.3.com or through the Double T 97.3 mobile app presented by Happy State Bank. Uh, this on the chat line, uh, 95 to 2022 is more than 14 years. Okay. What was the context of that? I don't know. It says JL. That must have been during one of the features that was playing or something. Oh, uh, got it. Would be my guess. Okay. would love to get your thoughts and comments today on the Yates Flooring Center chat line at double T 97, com. You know, the, the, the ring of honor committee, mm-hmm. the group of people that select these inductees, um, you know, Texas Tech has been very careful to not issue like formal guidelines, requirements, um, you know, benchmarks for this, right? And so when the first handful of inductees were all members of the College Football Hall of Fame, right? And when Zach Thomas was inducted after he was added to the Hall of Fame, you know, that was a, a pretty clear benchmark. But again, there were no guidelines issued, no edicts. Um, and they they kind of first broke that precedent with uh, Elmer Tar- Tarbox. I mean, Crabtree hadn't been inducted yet, but I think he had been like announced as a member of the class, if if I'm if I'm remembering correctly. Um, and then you know Mahomes is not in anything, and he's being inducted into the Tech Hall of Fame at the same time. And that's because he's still playing, right? He's in his just fifth year yeah. in the NFL. Um, you know, I, I I think it's interesting because what it what it might mean again, because every one of these things you set precedent, right, and you set expectations, whether you issue them formally or not. And so it's like now it's if if the next Mahomes equivalent comes through your program, and wouldn't that be great? Whether it's a quarterback or a receiver or a safety, whatever. Now there's this expectation or pressure of, well, hey, if, you know, he's an exceptional player and then goes to the NFL and has a really great start to his career, right? And, and you know, all pro or MVP or whatever, let, I mean, open up the doors. Let's do it, you know? Mm-hmm. And then you also wonder what it means for people like Graham Harrell, who accomplished infinitely more than Pat Mahomes did at Texas Tech. Uh, when is his induction going to occur, mm-hmm. right? And then Wes Walker, this is also big for him, Tarbox and uh, Mahomes. As you mentioned, the the criteria for College Football Hall of Fame means that Walker will never get in because he was never a first-team All-American on any of those um, approved. See, I was thinking maybe he was not as a receiver, but he as was a return a, He was man. a third-team All-American at one point uh, as a specialist. And I think that was as a freshman, but he otherwise he okay. did not receive right. any kind of All American uh, honors. And he, a he did more at Texas Tech than Pat Mahomes did, and I would argue he probably um, had just as much influence on the NFL as as Pat has so oh, far in terms absolutely. of kind of like that slot position and how I mean revolutionary is a pretty strong word, but how influential that yeah. was. No doubt. Uh, when he got there, and suddenly everybody began looking for kind of the next Welker. Um, so, yeah, it's it's interesting. Uh, this on the EH Flooring Center chat line. Somebody says, many years ago, Donnie Anderson states that a player had to be an All-American, first-round draft choice, and Hall of Fame. Uh, I, I must have forgotten or missed that quote. Somebody says, this is from Lucas. Uh, wouldn't you agree that Mahomes' induction is more heavily weighted based on the insane amount of goodwill and attention the university has received based on his success? Yep. Yeah, I don't think that's really any, any question, right? Yep. I mean, he had a losing record here as a quarterback. Not his fault. And he was, yeah, he played here with right. historically bad defenses. If, if you For had a top... Truly among the worst defenses in school history. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If if you had a top fifty defense, uh, twenty fifteen or twenty sixteen, you would have been um, probably competing for a Big Twelve championship. A handful. And, and yeah. that shouldn't. And he's not saying that, but that should not be viewed as a con either or a negative. What? That oh, because I saw some this morning that was like, oh well, he's being added because his after you know his NFL success and this and the you know all, all of these things that have happened since his time here 
and viewed it as a negative, and I, I didn't understand that angle at all. Well, you know, the, and you, you sort of said it, A.D., but if there's another NFL MVP that comes down the pike, then maybe you got to you create a precedent. Yeah. Well, I mean, Super Bowl, I, I Super think, Bowl MVP too, right? I think several things can be true at one time, right? I right. think, I think A, it can be true that uh, Patrick Mahomes, as a quarterback, did not enjoy the same level of team success when he was here as mm-hmm. Graham Harrell, Cliff Kingsbury, I mean, Seth right. Dagey, whatever. Um, you know, we can talk about why that is, and I think we all understand that he was saddled with um, some terrible defensive choices and and players. Uh, but the numbers are the numbers, and then B, you know, you're you're doing this not because of what he did at Texas Tech necessarily, but what because because of what he has become, uh, partly due to his time at Texas Tech and and what he has done so far in, in the NFL and kind of the 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 juice that you get from that association and halls of fame all halls of fame have the challenge um and i say challenge but the um the need to define how it is that they want to consider and 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 i'm talking about hall of fame here not ring of honor okay but all of them need to like lubbock isd the uh, lubbock isd hall of honor the induction was here three or four weeks ago just across the street very clearly talk about they're, they you need to have been good players and good citizens and all that at the Lubbock ISD school, but that they went on and did good things because I don't think anybody's going, man, Craig Elo was unbelievable at Monterey High School. He was a very good player. He went to junior college. Then he went to w- Washington State. Then he went and played in the NBA for 12, 14 years. You know, and so all of that factors into their induction process. College Baseball Hall of Fame, I put verbiage on that ballot that says this is about their college careers only. So when you see Barry Larkin or Roger Clemens or pick the name, Nomar Garcia Parra, those type guys, next to uh, uh, Kirk Dressendorfer, make sure you're reading that bio and looking at the the college career only. But the, you know, and, th- and that's very important. The Texas Tech Athletic Hall of Fame is very specific about um, some of the, uh, you know, when, and, I, and I vote on that as a letter winner, but that's that's more geared to what they did at Texas Tech in that uniform. Ring of Honor doesn't have those restrictions, and so th- those things are always very important to define. And, you know, I might be the Hall of Fame nerd in the back of the room on those type things going, hey, what all are we talking about here? Because it really does need to be defined for a voter or a committee member or whatever else to say how we're doing. And again, just to be clear, I'm not not on the Ring of Honor committee. And as a Hall of Fame, as a letter winner, I get to vote on the Texas Tech Athletic Hall of Fame. So th- those things need to be stipulated, and they are. This in the chat line from Lucas, he wants to clarify that his earlier statement was all in good faith uh, and that he believes Mahomes absolutely deserves the induction. Uh, love to get your thoughts and comments on the EH Flooring Center chat line at double t973.com com or through the double t973 mobile app presented by Happy State Bank. I mean, it's interesting because you've there's this huge period um, in your football program's history that so far is unrepresented in that ring of honor. And, you know, five years ago when you were kind of working your way through, I guess there's not a huge period because you have Zach Thomas in there, but still, like, you know, there's there's Byron Hanspard and Mark, Marcus Coleman, Marcus Coleman, and Wes Welker, and I mean, if if we're talking about stuff that you've done post playing, I mean, Cl- does Cliff Kingsbury not warrant some discussion here? Yeah, that'll be interesting. What if Cliff goes and coaches the Cardinals to a Super Bowl or some other NFL team to a Super Bowl someday? That might be, might be really right? interesting. To say nothing of Graham Harrell and, and people like that. I don't know. Interesting. Uh, this on the EH Flooring Center chat line. Um, Raiders' dad says this. Not sure which of the two is the best, but they come. They came within weeks of each other. Suck it, Steve, and open up and dump. Suck it, Steve. Open up and dump. Yeah. <laughs> well, we did. I'm actually open. glad you didn't play those in the reverse order. That that we, would have been very yeah, inappropriate. We did. Yeah. We did. Uh, Get some open up and dump this week, and we needed it. Heck, it just uh, as we were walking know, in, right? It's good. Evidently, DFW is getting p- 
pummeled right now. That's uh, th- that's been one of those. This last week has been one of those really um, those moments where you you recognize that you're getting old when when it's like, man, we really needed this rain. I know. Whereas, yeah, no doubt. twenty years ago, young me didn't yeah. care. Young me only cared if how it was going to affect practice that day. You've been listening to the Tech Talk podcast from Double T ninety seven three. Check out double T nine seven three dot com for more from Lubbock Sports Station.